Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense, and today I'm coming at you guys with the tag video, which is show me your spritz. To play on words. I was tagged by Benjamin at the Centitar to do this video, so shout out to him. There's a link in the description below to his channel if you want to go ahead and check that out. Basically what this is, is a series of questions that I'm going to answer for you guys here today. And in doing so, I will have shown you my spritz. So let's go ahead and jump into this and start knocking these questions out. All right, so the first question is the fragrance that I had to chase down or fragrance that I had to chase down. Probably going to be one of my discontinued fragrances. Uh, I've talked about this on the channel before, but I like collecting discontinued fragrances. Something about it is just really interesting to me. They were fragrances at one time that had either a lot of hype behind it or a lot of hope behind it with a uh, fragrance company, a perfumer, all that stuff. It was released and for one reason or another, it was discontinued. Either it didn't sell well, the company changed directions, whatever. And that really interests me. I like wearing those fragrances. It almost puts me back into the past, into a different time period. You're smelling a fragrance that at one time was out there. You could go into your local mall, pick it up, smell it, buy it. And now it's just gone. Like it didn't exist to begin with. So those interest me a lot. As far as which fragrance I had to chase down the most, maybe Gucci Rush. This one right here, fantastic woody fragrance. This one is one of the big three Gucci fragrances that got discontinued. So that's Gucci Envy, Gucci Pour Homme, and Gucci Rush. And this one is the one that gets talked about the least of those three. <clears throat> God, it smells good. I love this fragrance. I don't know if I would suggest to you to go out and pay the price that it goes for nowadays and, and blind buy it but I love the way that it smells. It's also got an interesting bottle design. It has this little slip cover, which says Gucci Rush there, as you can see in red. You take the slip cover off and there's the bottle, just all white, kind of plastic there on the side. And then the atomizer is just built into the top. So interesting. This one, for whatever reason, was the hardest one to find of the big three from Gucci for me because I wasn't wanting to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for it. And actually I found somebody who had this for swap and uh, this was a few years back. I forget what it is that I swapped for it. I think it was actually Creed Original Santal. If I'm recalling correctly, I had a bottle of Original Santal, but it was maybe like half full, like 75 milliliter size bottle. And I swapped that for this, I had to throw in a little money on top, but managed to get my hands on it, and I'm so glad I did. I love those three. The Gucci Rush, Gucci Envy, and Gucci Pour Homme. One, oh, so good. Next up is a new house that I love, a new fragrance house that I love. And for me, this is not a brand new fragrance house, but it's one that I just started getting into, and that is Nishane. I was first introduced to this brand by my friend Manny at Cascade Scents, and uh, I smelled some of the fragrances he owned from the house, really liked them. And we went to Etiquette up in Montreal, which is a niche and indie fragrance store. Well, they have other things there like skincare products, but I was there for the fragrances, and I got to try a bunch of Nishane fragrances there. And I actually bought Sultan Vetiver at etiquette at full retail. So I've really been digging the house. Um, they are high quality fragrances. They're not the most unique necessarily uh, fragrances. They're not really trying to push things super far as far as fragrances art, but they are for the most part very wearable with good projection, good longevity, a lot of versatility with these fragrances and just extremely pleasing to smell. So I've been really impressed by Nishane. I want to buy more of the fragrances. I want to smell them all. And that's the house right now that's new to me that I've really loved. Uh, next up is a fragrance that I agree with the hype on. So a fragrance that I guess has been hyped and I agree. It deserves the hype. So if we're talking recent designer releases, for me, probably Code Absolute by Armani. Love that fragrance. Sweet, big compliment puller, great nighttime fragrance, great fall fragrance, wintertime fragrance, good quality. To me, it's like taking Code Profumo, the DNA 
of Code Profumo and just smoothing it out, refining it, and making it just a little bit better. But if we're talking about just fragrances on the whole that have been hyped, that have gotten near universal acclaim from the fragrance community, and I agree with that, I would say uh, LDDM by Tower, L'Air du Desert Maracan. And I know the pronunciation's not great, but that one. Absolutely amazing fragrance, smells so good. It's the type of fragrance that I'll spray into the air just to, to get a whiff of it. It's, uh, as it's been talked about a million times, it's like desert air coming off the uh, Moroccan desert into a spice market, just all these things combining into one warmth and richness, spiciness, amazing. And that fragrance I actually sold, this was years back, then realized I was a moron for selling it and bought it again. I can count on two hands the number of fragrances over the years that I've sold and then gone, oh, I shouldn't have done that <laughs> and bought another bottle. That's one of them. I've learned my lesson though, never gonna sell it again, always going to have a bottle. Amazing fragrance by Andy Tower. Next up, a fragrance that I don't agree with the hype on. So this is one that's been hyped in the community, either when it was released or just over time, that I don't necessarily agree with. And for me, it's gonna be Tom Ford Neroli Portofino. Probably could have gone around, looked at all these fragrances and come up with a different answer, but that's the first one that popped into my mind. Now Neroli Portofino has sold really well. Lots of people love it. Great summertime fragrance. It's fresh, you get that white citrus popping. It's a good fragrance. But it seems to me like a very expensive take on 4711, which costs next to nothing. Now, of course, the performance is gonna be better on Neroli Portofino, but when I smell Neroli Portofino, I'm just like, it's good. Is it great? Not to me. Obviously, it's launched numerous flankers. It's launched an entire line based around uh, summertime kind of scents, inspirations from Tom Ford. But for me, Neroli Portofino is just one of those fragrances that never did it for me at the price that you have to pay to pick it up. The next question here is my best blind buy, which is hard for me to answer because I have blind bought hundreds and hundreds of fragrances over the years. Some of those have turned out better than others. So for this one, I'm just gonna go over some recent blind buys that turned out really well because it's hard for me to say what is my greatest blind buy of all time when there have been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. One of my best blind buys recently is Pulse of the Night by Issey Miyake, which is right over there. That one really surprised me. Picked it up for about $50. Quality much higher than I was expecting. Fantastic cool weather fragrance. Uh, it's got resins and incense. Uh, it's just very well done. Another one that was very surprising to me and very high quality, Ellie Saab Ombre. And that one is actually done by Francis Kirkjean, of course, from Maison Francis Kirkjean or uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mans. He did that one too. Each fragrance in the Ellie Saab line is based off of a particular note. So you've got vetiver, ombre, oud, etc., etc. And that one is just a fantastic amber fragrance. At the time, I picked that up for $50, $55, and it smelled like a fragrance that should have cost $120, $150. Presentation on it, very good, quality, very high, great blind buy. The last one I'll talk about is DS Endurga Bowmakers. DS Endurga is an American indie slash niche brand that I like a lot. Uh, they, they have a particular style to them, and Bowmakers is one that's centered around woods and it's got this nice almost uh spicy woodiness to it that is extremely high quality all the ds and fragrances have a little bit of a backstory to them how they're supposed to smell bowmakers is supposed to be i believe this is off memory an 1800s new england woodworking shop that is making basically uh, stringed instruments violins cellos etc etc so you've got this kind of varnished woods accord and the fragrance in it. it smells great to me so those are three blind buys that i've done recently that turned out really well next up is a rare fragrance in my collection and for that i'm going to go back to the discontinued fragrances that typically sit right behind me here i just featured gucci rush there's also gucci envy gucci pour Homme. Uh, let me find one that i think is 
really nice. So a lot of the fragrances back there are ones that were hyped at one time or another in the fragrance community, stuff like M7 or those Gucci's, but these two are ones that I think of as just great fragrances to reach for when you're wanting to be put in a good mood, especially right now in springtime. And it's gonna be this one, Davidoff Good Life, and this one, Escada Casual Friday. It's very sad that these fragrances were discontinued and they each really fill a similar niche, which is going to be daytime, springtime, summertime, where Good Life features fig, very green, fresh, a little bit of tartness in there, fantastic smelling fragrance. And then Casual Friday from Escada. Actually, uh, Escada doesn't make men's fragrances at all now, which is a bummer. They had some good ones. Escada Pour Homme, Escada Magnetism, Escada Casual Friday. They had some solid scents, but they decided to just can them. This one is gonna be a little bit creamier than Good Life. Good Life, a little more brisk. This one has got uh, lavender, it's got vanilla, it has carnation, which is a note that you don't see very often nowadays and this one was released in 99 so right at the turn of the century there's also anise in here tonka cardamom it's got a lot going on and this one is one that was uh, a little difficult for me to find as well you'll notice that it's a little bit beat up i actually bought this bottle from one of the editors at fragrantica he was having a sell of some of the bottles in his collection. When I saw this one for sale, jumped on it. Bought it right away. Very excited to have it. Casual Friday. Next up is a future fragrance purchase that I'm very excited to get in my hands. And that one is going to be the new Guerlain Lome Ideal Extreme. Now I know it's not the next big niche fragrance, the next big super expensive limited edition. And ultimately, it's probably going to be available at discounters for you know, 40 bucks, 45 bucks, but I love the low midi all line. The almond used across the line, I think smells great. That creamy sweetness really does it for me. Low midi all cologne, even though it's been discontinued, is a favorite of mine in springtime. And then the Eau de Parfum, I think is a fantastic release as well. So I'm gonna read off the notes for this fragrance really quickly. Top of bergamot and pink pepper, mid of almond, plum, heliotrope, cinnamon, and exotic spices, and a base of leather, tobacco, cedar, and patchouli. A lot of those notes are notes that I really enjoy in fragrances. Plum, cinnamon, spice, almond, bergamot, pink pepper, leather, tobacco. Yeah, all of that sounds great to me. And it does keep in line with the Loam Ideal line, how they've done basically a fall and winter release, then a spring and summer release, fall and winter release, spring and summer release, fall and winter release, spring and summer release. They alternate year to year. And since last year, 2019, was Loam Ideal Cool, which is a spring and summer release. It makes sense that this one is going to be for cooler weather. And this one is a fragrance I'm very excited for. I have every single release in the Loam Ideal line, so gotta keep that going. Next up is a fragrance for my favorite musician or band. If I would create a fragrance for my favorite band, what would that fragrance be? And who is the group or musician? So for me, it would be Above and Beyond as the musical group. Absolutely love them. I've seen them probably 12 times at this point. And if I were going to do a fragrance for them, and I don't want to make this too complicated as if I'm going to list out 15 or 20 notes and all these different ideas and things that the fragrance should convey. Let's keep it simple. And the opening bright and uplifting, maybe something like a tangerine, yuzu, and ginger. Something that really pops. Keep it sweet and clean through the mid. Geranium, lemon verbena, uh, maybe a little pink pepper in there. And then warm and inviting in the base, maybe vanilla, honey, and sweet oud, something like that. That could potentially work, maybe. And then last but not least, my most expensive purchase failure. And for me, this one's easy. Clive Christian number one. It is enormously expensive. And for me, it's just not something I enjoy smelling like. A lot of people have said that it smells a bit like a grandma floral, powdery, soapy, old school, and all those things are true. Now the quality is there. It does not smell like an inexpensive fragrance. It does not smell like a cheap fragrance because it's not. But as far as wearability goes, it's not there for me. It is not something I want to smell like. And to be honest with you, it's not something I even enjoy smelling, period. So for me, most expensive failure very easily, Clive Christian, number one. And that's gonna do it for me. 
for showing you my spritz. Since this is a tag video, I guess I'll tag some people. So let me tag some people I've never tagged before. Tag uh, Daver at the Fragrance Bros. And we will tag Tunes at Tunes Reviews. So now you two can show me your spritz. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me today. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Thanks so much for all your support. And I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. Stay safe out there, guys. See you later.